talk of this series, I was putting forward, so as to have all my cards on the table, what my metaphysics are. That is to say, what are the basic assumptions from which I approach this question. And I stress two points in particular. Number one, that as I feel this universe, I think we are under an illusion with regard to the nature of ourselves. This arises from the superstition that there are really separate things and events. And I pointed out that that is actually a way of thinking rather than a state of affairs in the physical universe. In order to think, one must thing. That is to say, divide this astonishing cosmic Rorschach blot into bits and give the bits names. This is a kind of calculus. And we break the world down into these separate things and separate events. They're really thing events, you might call them, in order to calculate about it in order to describe its behavior, in order to think. And but just as something that costs five dollars, if you buy uh, a loaf of bread or a, uh, let's say it wouldn't be five dollars, let's say fifty cents, uh, it isn't fifty separate things that you buy, although you pay fifty cents for it. And so in the same way, when we talk about the multiplicity of things in this universe. This is just a way of measuring it. Measuring it with words as you measure the value of something with money or the length of something with inches. But we are so accustomed to, so I would say hypnotized by the usefulness of thought that we come to imagine that the way the world is thinked is the way it's thinged, is the way it really is. But I rather see it as a continuous process, a single vast field of activity, a single pattern of which every single one of us is an expression. But when you think about, say, a series of events as being separate events, it's the result of a kind of myopia. If you watch through uh, some, something going on through a narrow slit, you see the event broken down into bits. And you see bit following bit, whereas if the crack were enlarged, you would see that the separate bits were all one event. So in much the same way, our custom of attending to our experience with concentrated attention cuts it down into things we call separate events. The other basis of my metaphysics was that we tend to ignore the polarity of the world. That is to say, uh, to use a simpler word, the go-withness of things and events. That just as in a series of waves, to have a complete wave you must have both a crest and a trough. You can't have a half wave. Half waves are never manifested in this cosmos. Just as you must have the crest and the trough, so also there is a go-withness of subject and object, self and other, 
and of course those great fundamental physical polarities being and non-being solid and space light and darkness life and death but when this is not perceived when we are not aware of the total unity of the world of the fact that one's actual self is not something in the world separate from it but the whole works and when you are not aware that self and other go together inside and outside in such a way as to constitute one total body then because of this feeling of separation of not really belonging we feel alienated from our total environment and from other people and so act towards it in a predominantly hostile way now during the question period there arose some discussion of the purpose of this universe and I think I stirred up a little bit of trouble by suggesting that I didn't think it had a purpose in the ordinary sense of the word purpose that is to say action directed towards a future striving for a goal I felt rather that the design of the world was playful as distinct from purposive and furthermore therefore that being itself existence is not fundamentally and finally serious of course you see if you think if you really believe that you are this lonely little separate being confronted by a world that uh, doesn't give a damn about you and is mostly hostile then it is pretty serious you're in a trap man <laughs> but one might ask in conventional Christian terms if there is a God is God serious and one would say I hope not because let's look at this word serious if some attractive young woman says to me I love you ought I to come back to her and say are you serious or are you just playing with me I don't think I should ask that because I hope she isn't serious and that she will play with me <laughs> I, I don't really go for serious girls <laughs> So I should ask instead, are you sincere or are you just toying with me? And you see, that gives an entirely different uh, meaning. Because seriousness is a kind of gravity and a gravity is a kind of weight and that which is heavy is a drag it sinks 